Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for, for being here and uh, we're pleased to kick this off. I'm, I'm not sure it's the, uh, uh, the happiest or more, most optimistic subject, but this is going to be a panel. Uh, it's entitled, uh, Turkey, a Downward Spiral. Uh, stated in the form of a question, uh, but let me break the suspense and say, uh, uh, answer it definitively, yes, Turkey is in a downward spiral and the only real question is how deep. Uh, how severe the implications will be for the United States, and then what, if anything, America can do to, to help mitigate uh, some of the damage and to, to preserve U.S. interests. Uh, happy to have with us uh, FDD's, uh, one of our most recent additions, senior fellow, uh, Ikon Erdemir. Uh, who uh, has come to us from Turkey, uh, recently uh, uh, left as a uh, parliamentarian, a uh, member of the opposition CHP party in Turkey, served one term, uh, has now uh, left Turkish politics, and uh, to FDD's great benefit is decided to come to Washington and work for FDD in our uh, Turkey program which, while only a year old, I think is already making a, uh, a significant impact on uh, Washington's ability to assess and understand what are the trends in Turkey and what it is that the United States might, uh, might do to help shape some beneficial, beneficial outcomes. We're also going to be joined by my former colleague, Eric Edelman, uh, who is currently a professor at SAIS, uh, but uh, longtime career U.S. Uh, diplomat, uh, was most importantly for these purposes our ambassador to Turkey in 2003 to 2005, and then retired from the U.S. government uh, uh, from the Pentagon as our undersecretary of defense for policy, the top policy position in the Pentagon, the top policy advisor to Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. Uh, Eric is going to be a little bit late, but he's going to join us in, uh, hopefully, in just a few minutes. Um, Icon, let me uh, kick off this dis uh, discussion. I sort of uh, gave the ending to the story, which is that we do need to be concerned about Turkey, but I, I wonder if you can just fill in some of the blank spaces and provide a fuller assessment of what are the, the different trends and trajectories we see domestically, particularly inside of Turkey now. Um, those in the audience who have either witnessed or read about President Erdogan's DC visit just two weeks ago probably know uh, f at first, first hand what the problems are. You know, journalists were insulted, harassed, kicked out of the, a Brookings <laughs> event. Uh, protesters were attacked physically and verbally. And I think that was very symbolic of the kind of problems Turkey is living through. Uh, Turkey is in a downward spiral. Sure, Turkey's democracy was never perfect. So uh, it's not all current President Erdogan's doing, but under his 13-year rule, uh, what we see is uh, a, a systematic majoritarian authoritarian rule strategy being put to uh, action. That is, uh, Erdogan, who is committed to Muslim brother Brotherhood goals, uh, is taking Turkey, I think, uh, down the wrong path. Turkey is a, a very important NATO member since 1952, a very important partner of the transatlantic alliance, is, I think, gradually moving away, not only from the transatlantic alliance, but also Western values, uh, secular liberal democracy. Uh, it's, uh, for example, just two years ago, uh, President Erdogan, uh, at, at a public event, told uh, Putin to al uh, allow Turkey into Shanghai Cooperation Organization so that he could say farewell to the European Union. Now, he seems to have, you know, President Erdogan seems to have changed his uh, opinion on that after the downing of the Russian jet. Uh, but this, this shows uh, the kind of uh, drifting away uh, Turkey is in, the, the, the double play, uh, the, the very tactical, pragmatic U-turns. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the, the facts speak for themselves. Turkey has now a witch hunt for 2,000 academics who, whose only sin was to sign a petition for peace. Uh, Turkey leads uh, in the number of journalists jailed. Uh, the government has been cracking down on independent media. 
appointing government trustees and turning critical media outlets into government mouthpieces. Uh, and uh, Turkey is now gradually moving to a more centralized executive presidential system. There is a de facto executive presidential system, uh, but President Erdogan would like to, either through snap elections or through forcing through a constitutional amendment, uh, would like to bring in a system whereby he would have full control over judiciary, legislative, and executive branches. The media, we no uh, is already under government control. So when you add all these up, uh, this neither looks good for Turkey's democracy nor for uh, the transatlantic alliance because we, are, we seem to be losing a very important member uh, of, the, of the NATO and uh, also a member of the Council of Europe, an accession, uh, a country in accession process uh, of the European Union. Yeah, I wonder if you can just quickly say a few words about the other big problem that Turkey faces internally, which is that problem with, with its own Kurdish uh, minority that has really flared up recently and poses, I think, a great danger, at least in the long term, to the integrity of the state itself. Yes, uh, let, uh, let me start uh, by praising President Erdogan, and that doesn't come too often, so this is a historical moment. Uh, he did initiate the Kurdish peace process, mm -hmm. Uh, the way he did it was not sustainable, but nevertheless, it was a brave and important step. Second, under his term, Turkey developed very positive, cordial ties with the Kurdistan regional government. So those two steps were, I think, steps in the right direction. But now there seems to be a U-turn vis-a-vis Turkey's own Kurds. The Kurdish peace process, in part owing to Turkish government's mistakes and in part owing to the PKK's mistakes, uh, seem to be uh, over. Uh, there is all-out fighting. Uh, sure, those of you who visit Istanbul will see a, a vibrant Turkey uh, on the rise, but if you go to Kurdish-majority cities in, the, in, the, in Turkey's southeast, you'll see almost civil war proportions. You'll see whole town quarters uh, raised to ground. You'll see uh, almost quarter million uh, internally displaced peoples. And you'll see, more importantly, uh, Turkey losing a generation of its Kurds. The, 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 the Kurdish youth being uh, completely disengaged from Turkish politics, and they probably no longer see any future within the Turkish Republic. Mm, it's, it's no wonder that you, you mentioned the, the Brookings event, which I think really encapsulates this terrible problem we face, the thought that this guy could have thought he would have brought these goons to do in Washington, D.C., the heart of the greatest democracy in the world, the same thing as what he's doing on the streets of Ankara and Istanbul, Istanbul is really quite a, quite a chilling prospect for a country that has been this important and this pivotal to American national security interests for, uh, for more than 50 years. Uh, welcome, Eric. Great. You could make it to be here. We really appreciate it have, having you. Um, yeah, this probably I'd, works better in there if, it were, if, if it's not... It doesn't. It'll still work? Yeah, as long as you're, well, uh, are you okay. sitting or standing? I think we get my I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, right. Uh, well, who is if you're sitting, it's yeah. not going to work. Yet. Turn it down, please. Um, I don't know if you've got anything to add in terms from where you sit about, <laughs> not to what Michael, to Michael, to Michael to Michael's comment. I mean, Michael's always very, very smart, so it's always. But on Turkey, do you have, uh, if you've got anything to add, so, you know, from where you sit here in Washington, you wrote a very penetrating uh, op-ed recently together with uh, former Ambassador Abramo, it's your colleague, uh, talking about the situation in, inside of Turkey and suggesting that if, if Erdogan can't find a way to change from his current course, the best thing for the, for the United States and for Turkey would be if he, he resigned. So I wonder if you can add just any comments to that and then quickly, tell us in the time we have remaining what, what it is that America might do to, to at least mitigate the, the tremendous damage that could be caused by a rupture in this relationship. Well, thank you, John, and, and it's, I apologize for being late, but um, I also want to just start by uh, saying how uh, terrific it is that FDD has been devoting as much time and attention to Turkey as, uh, as it has, because I think this is a hugely important problem. As you said, this is a pivotal country has been for the United States uh, since the end of the Second World War. Uh, and notwithstanding all the difficulties, and from what I heard of ICOM's comments, they perfectly described my own views of this. Uh, when Mort and I wrote our op-ed, 
um, you know, I don't think we had any illusions that um, uh, President Erdogan was going to heed our uh, injunction that he should either reform his ways or resign. But what we really were, I think, trying to draw attention to uh, was the fact that uh, a party, a government, and a leader who, when they arrived on the scene uh, 14 years ago, were greeted not just in Turkey but here in Washington as potentially uh, reformers who could uh, undo some of the um, uh, un, un, um, who could accomplish some of the unfinished business of Turkey's modernization, uh, have turned away from that reform agenda and have gone in the direction, uh, the unfortunate directions that Icon uh, described so well. Uh, and, and that people here needed to recognize yeah. this. Uh, little did we know that the president would do so much to help us in our effort to you know, uh, draw attention to the authoritarianism that now afflicts Turkey and, and the relationship. So I, I do think, you know, thanks in no small part to the work of, of FDD, um, that people you know, now in Washington uh, see the problem a little more accurately, even President Obama, who had a, a virtual bromance with uh, uh, Tayyip Erdogan uh, for the first five years of his presidency, has said in the Jeff Goldberg interview that he regards him as a disappointment and as, as a, a failure and a failure yeah. and an authoritarian. So that at least, at least we can now all agree on the problem and, yeah. and, and the diagnosis. Now we have to figure out what the prescription is. And, and part of the difficulty is that notwithstanding all these things about Turkey, there it is still uh, you know, looming very large uh, in the affairs of the region and in, in our own, you know, tied up very much with our own interests in the region. So I think what, is, you know, uh, call, what we're called upon to do is something that's very difficult for us to do, uh, for any country to do in its diplomacy, but particularly for us. Uh, as a democracy, uh, as a vibrant democracy with you know, a lot of uh, moving parts and a lot of people with opinions and stakeholders in the system. And, and that is to, in the first instance, have a very serious strategic dialogue, which we have not had for the last five or six years since the civil war in Syria broke out. Uh, a dialogue that really uh, conveys to Turkey that we really are listening and understand their concerns about their own security and what's happening on their doorstep and that we're prepared to undertake things like a safe zone, a no-fly zone in uh, northeastern Syria uh, along the Turkish border that will uh, help staunch the flow of refugees and therefore help Turkey deal with the refugee crisis, allow people to return from Turkey uh, uh, who uh, want to go back to Syria, give them a safe place to be uh, before they can perhaps get back to their homes eventually, uh, and also give us a place, a space from which we can actually train uh, an alternative force to uh, the forces that are tearing the country apart now, which are the uh, Assad regime's forces and, and the Islamist forces of Jabhat al-Nusra and ISIL, which have, in a sense, been helped by the Russian intervention, which seeks to preserve that binary choice and force us into choosing Assad. I think that would at least open the way to have a, a more serious uh, discussion with Turkey about what its priorities are. Right now, Turkey's priorities are, you know, public enemy number one is the PKK, but more broadly, really, than the PKK, the Kurds, because as Icon suggested, uh, what's going on in southeastern Turkey now is, is a war, and the, and the lack of training, lack of equipment of the Turkish armed forces has led them to essentially perform counterinsurgency by artillery strike which, as you and I know from our experience with this, is not a very effective way to do counterinsurgency. And it leads to the results that I can describe. Um, second, I think while we do that, and while we try and you know, reorient them towards uh, fighting ISIL, fighting Assad, um, and trying to go back to what Erdogan was initially trying to do, which was to make peace with the Kurdish population, not to alienate them and radicalize them as he's doing with his current policy, we also have to make clear that both publicly and privately, that the kinds of things we saw at Brookings, the kinds of things we're seeing with the media in Turkey, with rule of law in Turkey, are not acceptable. And that Turkey can't be the kind of partner working with us that we want it to be if that's the course they're going to be on. Yeah, no, I think that that's right, that that issue of what role America can play 
behind the scenes in doing something of what we did with the Kurds of Iraq and Turkey to try and move that relationship in a far more positive direction that advantages U.S. interests is the type of thing we probably do need to be somehow thinking about in, in, with respect to Turkey's own Kurds. Okay, unfortunately, I'm getting the sign that that's the, that's the hook. This is just the briefest of introductions to the kinds of things FDD is thinking about and researching with respect to Turkey. It's, uh, like we say, a pivotal country, and we'll continue to, to do our work and continue to want to engage with all of you.